All right, so as you can see, we have fully functional Windows security over here, working as intended. But as usual, I have some mischief planned. And instead of telling you what is going to happen, let me show you. It's only going to take a couple seconds. So I'm going to open up Terminal. There's a little surprise that I'm going to type in here. And execute. Now, wait a couple seconds and uh, <laughs> something funny going on over here. And if we open this, look at this. Donkey Kong is now protecting our system. Gone is Windows Defender, the useless piece of crap made by Microsoft. We have replaced it with a superior antivirus that is, of course, Donkey Kong. Kids, do not try this at home because basically what we've done is we have completely destroyed the Windows security module and we are completely unprotected now against any kind of malware. So if I were to download a malware on the system and run it, it would go straight through. Now we can, of course, do a quick demonstration of that. So give me a moment. Let me find my favorite ransomware. What are we going to play with today? How about dark side? You can say welcome to the dark side, low rename to exe and fate don't fail me now. Of course, we are protected by the legendary Donkey Kong antivirus. So nothing could possibly go wrong. Except, of course, within seconds, our data is encrypted and I'm sure the desktop background change is coming any moment. Now for the security folks, you might be wondering what has happened here. Basically, we have tricked Windows into thinking that we have enabled a third party antivirus and therefore Windows Defender is completely turned off. This is the same mechanism that other AV products use when they register themselves inside of Windows security. They represent the antivirus functionality. That component gets turned off. It's managed by the third party. But of course, we have only tricked it into thinking that uh, we have installed a third party antivirus named Donkey Kong. And so we the configuration change, Microsoft is no longer protecting the system with Windows Defender. Is this going to be a super effective attack vector? Well, maybe, maybe not, but it's definitely fun to watch. And it reminds me of the good old fake AV back in the day. So where did this begin? Well, with a little GitHub project called No Defender a slightly more fun way to disable Windows Defender. This project started using code from traditional AV vendors that obviously register themselves inside Windows Defender in order to replace it. But of course, you can take that part of the code out and if you run it in exclusion, it's possible to just get the disabling functionality and register whatever antivirus you want to pretend to be of your choosing. Now, I wonder what effect this would have on a third-party antivirus. So let's say you had a different for an antivirus installed and registered in Windows Defender. If you run the same script, is it going to turn that off? Probably not because the third party AV does not depend on the Windows Defender registration mechanism, but I guess you would still see the effects on the UI. But this project eventually got taken down because of a DMCA claim. Maybe they didn't want the bad publicity, but now the project is back and with its own code. There's a whole write-up of it if you want to understand the details. It turns out it's not super hard if you reverse engineer the Windows Security Center, which is a service, of course, that is used by Windows to figure out what antivirus software you're running. There's also an API, which is kind of undocumented, and you need to sign an NDA with Microsoft to get this information. I guess the idea is to restrict it to the AV vendors. That, of course, does not stop hackers, and it did not stop whoever wrote this github project bleeping computer has of course reported on this as well and currently i think microsoft defender is detecting the tool itself as malware <laughs> i guess that's one way to deal with the problem but i think it reminds us of the fundamental issue with windows defender which is that it is fairly easy to bypass or disable even outside of funny mechanisms like this you could always go into the virus and threat protection modules add C drive to exclusions with a simple command, a registry edit that could simply be a precursor to any malware execution. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this amazing new antivirus I've just installed in the comments below. Would you run Donkey Kong? Would you trust your favorite infamous video game character to defend you from malware? You know what? I'm not too satisfied with Darkseid. It hasn't even changed our background yet. Let's try a different ransomware. Maybe something that's going to give us some uh, lights and fireworks here because you came here for the show, right? So how about a little black claw? If dark isn't dark enough, there's always black. That's what they say. So 
Well, I just made that up. But if we run this, we should see some further encryption behavior. Aha, much better. Now our system looks like it is having more fun. Looks like some velociraptors trying to tear its way through like in the Jurassic Park kitchen scene. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on this Windows security loophole bypass, whatever you want to call it. Do you think it is an effective way for malware to get through or do you think it's more for show? And of course, don't forget to like and share if you enjoy this content. More to follow. Now, an interesting approach to cybersecurity is the idea of zero trust or default deny, which is used by the sponsor of this video, ThreatLocker. So for example, if I am to try to execute a ransomware on the system, just quick rename and execute, it is not going to work because ThreatLocker is just going to block it and then only allow us to request access. And even if we do request access, we have a dedicated response center to deal with it. So now we see the file that we've submitted and we can run it in a test environment to see if it's a legitimate file or ransomware. This is like a full virtual machine or malware analysis environment of sorts. And of course, when we run it, we see the ransomware has encrypted all our files. So definitely not doing this on the real system. Now, adding this layer of defense via default deny is a really useful thing for enterprises to prevent them from running untrusted software. Now, they also have the ability to detect threats based on behavior. So for example, we've got a backup deletion here. This is using VSS admin, can alert you of suspicious behavior, but also contain it. Now, we did do an independent test of this where we talked about the ups and the downs of this approach. So if you're interested, do watch that using the link in description and check them out. It's a very interesting solution. Show them some love for sponsoring our educational videos like this one. Try it out for yourself and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you like the zero trust and uh, default deny approach? And don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.